during viral infection to a normal cell the virus first of all attaches to the plasma membrane of the cell now the process of endocytosis starts during endocytosis the plasma membrane with attached virus invaginates inward forming a cup like structure this cup like structure with the virus then pinched up from the plasma membrane and forms an endosome the endosomal virus then releases its genome into the host cell cytosol the viral genome then undergoes transcription to produce mrna the mrna then with the help of host cell ribosomes undergoes translation to produce viral protein this viral protein acts as antigen for the host cell or target cell like all other proteins viral protein also has an amino terminus and a carboxyl terminus near the amino terminus of the viral protein an epsilon amino group on lysine side chain is present in presence of ubiquitinating enzyme complex several ubiquitin proteins are covalently linked to an epsilon amino group on lysine side chain of viral protein this process requires atp hydrolysis means during this process one atp undergoes hydrolysis to produce amp and ppi this process forms an ubiquitin protein complex this ubiquitin protein complex is now ready for degradation in the eukaryotic cells cytosol proteasomes are present the structure of proteasome is like a cylinder these proteasomes are 26s in nature the proteasome has proteolytic enzyme subunits these proteolytic enzyme subunits catalyze cleavage of peptide bonds the ubiquitin protein complex then goes into the central channel of the proteasome inside the central channel of proteasome ubiquitin protein complex is degraded as a result peptides are formed the diameter of central channel of proteasome is 10 to 50 angstrom degree a proteasome can cleave peptide bonds between two or three amino acid combinations rough endoplasmic reticulum membrane or rer has anchored tap tap stands for transporter associated with antigen processing tap is a heterodimer tap consists of two proteins called as tap1 and tap2 both tap1 and tap2 have luminal domains multiple membrane spanning domains and cytosolic domains the cytosolic domains of both tap1 and tap2 have atp binding domains these atp binding domains bind to atps tap1 and tap2 belong to the family of atp binding cassette proteins found in the membranes of many cells including bacteria tap1 and tap2 mediate atp dependent transport of amino acids sugars ions and peptides in the cytosol of eukaryotic cell proteins like lmp2 lmp7 and lmp10 associate with a proteasome lmp stands for low molecular mass polypeptide this association 
changes catalytic specificity of proteasome. Due to this changed catalytic specificity, cytosolic antigen protein undergoes degradation in the central channel of proteasome to produce peptides that bind to class 1 MHC molecules. These peptides contain 8 to 10 amino acids. The RER membrane has DAP. Cytosolic ATP first binds to the ATP binding domain of TAP. The bound ATP then undergoes hydrolysis to produce ADP and PI. Due to this ATP hydrolysis, TAP translocates cytosolic peptides into the RER lumen. The remaining cytosolic peptides are converted into amino acids. The RER membrane has a newly synthesized class 1 alpha chain and a calnexin. Within the RER membrane, a newly formed class 1 alpha chain associates with calnexin. After some time, a protein complex containing class 1 MHC, calreticulin, tapasin, beta 2 microglobulin is formed in the RER. To this protein complex, then luminal peptide binds. Now we will discuss in detail about the process of formation of protein complex containing class 1 MHC, calreticulin, tapasin, beta 2 microglobulin. During this process, first of all, class 1 MHC alpha chain associates with calnexin in the RER membrane. Calnexin is a molecular chaperon. Due to this association, calnexin associated class 1 MHC alpha chain is formed. Luminal beta 2 microglobulin then binds to the calnexin associated class 1 MHC alpha chain. Due to this binding, calnexin is released. Due to the binding of beta 2 microglobulin, tapasin and calreticulin binds to the complex containing class 1 MHC alpha chain and beta 2 microglobulin. Calreticulin is a chaperonin. Tapasin is associated with TAP. In the RER lumen, a chaperon protein called ERP57 associates with the calnexin and calreticulin complexes. ERP57 is present in the RER lumen. It is thought that ERP57 contributes to the formation of disulfide bonds during the formation of class 1 chains. Due to the binding of tapasin and calreticulin to the complex containing class 1 MHC alpha chain and beta 2 microglobulin, a calreticulin tapasin associated class 1 MHC molecule is formed. To this calreticulin tapasin associated class 1 MHC molecule, luminal antigenic peptide binds. The tapasin and calreticulin are then released from the calreticulin tapasin associated class 1 MHC molecule. As a result, class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex is formed. The binding of antigenic peptide also stabilizes the class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex. The class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex then exits the RER lumen by a vesicle. The vesicle containing class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex then moves towards the Golgi complex. The vesicle containing class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex then fuses with the Golgi complex and then boards up from the Golgi complex. The vesicle containing class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex pinch up from the Golgi complex and then 
moves towards the plasma membrane of target cell or host cell. The vesicle containing class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex then fuse with the host cell or target cell plasma membrane. As a result, the class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex is delivered to the cell surface. CD8 plus T cell has TCR and CD8 on its surface. The TCR and CD8 of CD8 plus T cell binds to the exposed class 1 MHC molecule peptide complex. As a result, appropriate response is created and the target cell is killed. Please like, subscribe and share.